Hello students, in this video we'll discuss the transformation law for the Christoffel symbols. Let's recall that the metric tensor transforms in the following way. G, L, M in new coordinates is going to be G, I, J, and then D, X, I, D, X, L, D, X tilde, L, D, X, J, D tilde, M. Okay? That's the transformation law for the metric tensor. All right? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to differentiate this with respect to the x, uh, xn bar. And so if I can do that, I'll get d, g, tilde, l, m, d, x, tilde, n. It's going to be three distinct terms by the product rule. So it's going to be d squared xi, dxl, dxm, dxj, d tilde x, m, gij. Then we'll have a dxi, dxi, dxl, tilde. Then we'll have a d squared, dxj. Then we'll have a d tilde m, d tilde m, gij. And then we'll have the last terms over here. And the last terms over here, we're going to use the chain rule on. So let's do those with the chain rule terms. So this is going to be what? Then we'll have a dxi plus dxi, dx tilde l plus dxj, dx tilde m, times, of course, at the times, m, and then times, so this and this, times, then I have to do the derivative of the metric tensor with respect to xn bar, so I use the chain rule there, that's going to be a dxk, dx tilde n, and then a dij, dx tilde k, and that's going to give me my transformation laws. So now I'm going to do is I'm going to cyclically permute these indices over here twice more to find a relationship between the lower Christoffel symbols, okay? So let's do that next. So what will D, so if we cyclically permute, what will D, G, and then we move the M downstairs, the M and N up, M, N, D, X, bar, L, B. Let's think, okay? So I'm just going to use the same formula. I'm just going to shift the indices around, okay? So let's do it carefully, okay? It's going to be D squared, D, X, I with respect to L and N. So L and N over here are going to turn into M and L. Okay? Times DXJ. And it was this M. This M is going to... So the M over here is now what? Is now the N. So that's DX till the N. I have everything I need there. Plus what? Plus DXI. And the next term we had a what? We had an XL. The XL was really the M here. So that's the X till the M. And then D squared DXJ. And then we have the what terms over here. So these terms over here correspond to M and N, M and N, which is N and L. Great, G, I, J. Remember, I and J are dummy indices over here, and so is K. All righty, excellent. And of course, these terms are times G, I, J as well, right? So these are G, I, J, G, I, J, okay? And then plus what? And then plus D, X, I, D, X, L, now, what was the L here? The L here was this entry that's an XM. DXJ, the M over here is the N. And then the DXK, dummy index, DXN tilde. What, what's N tilde now? N tilde over here in this formula is corresponding to L. L. Then a partial GIJ, partial XK like that. That's one cycle of these things. Let's do the next cycle. The next cycle is going to be what? The next cycle is going to be partial G, partial NL, partial X tilde M. That's going to be what? That's going to be a GIJ, partial squared XI. Now I have an L and an N, so that's going to be an N and an M. Great. And then what? And then a plus times one, of course times this xj, and then the n, of course, so I have, what do I have, I mean, so let's see, so what do I have over here, so I have a, um, an l and an n, that's going to be an n and an m, there we go, and then I'm missing an l, right, which corresponds to the m over here, yep, perfect, uh, let's make sure I didn't do this correctly, so uh, let's make one sort of small error over here, so let's check this again, so I have dxi, and then I have my, in my first remark, I have an L and an N, so that's going to be an N and an M. And then I have an M over here, which is going to correspond to an L. Yep, great. Times X tilde L. 
plus gij, and then dxi over dxl, but the xl over here corresponds to n, d squared xj over what? m and n, m and n are these indices, so l and m, and then plus dxi over what? dxl, the dxl, oh sorry, the dxl over here, the dxl is going to be in n, dxj over dxm, which is l, and then finally what? And then finally, we'll get what? Uh, dxk, dx probably m now, right? dxm, because I have an n over here, and then over here corresponds to um, the m, right? And then partial gij, partial xk. Great. And so now what I want to do is I want to call this equation over here number one. So this is equation, all this thing over here is equation one, all this is equation two, and all this is equation three, right? And so I want to do one half, so one half equation three, so three, plus two minus one is gonna give me what? Well, let's think about what it's gonna give us over here. So it's gonna be this expression over here, one half of this thing over here, then plus this thing over here, and then this thing over here, right? Those three things, uh, excuse me, this thing over here, right? And so those three things together can give me the transformation law for what? That's gonna give me the transformation law for gamma tilde, of what? Now it's gonna be the upper index over here. So upper index, the lower index is gonna be n, so it's gonna be an n, l, m, like that, okay? Excellent. And what will this be on the right-hand side over here? Well, let's think about this over here. It's gonna be a what? It's going to be a gamma, let's see, we're having, uh, let's look at these terms over here, so these terms over here, then these terms over here, then these terms over here. And what I want to do is I want to pull up the right transformation law, so I'm going to be partial xi, so I pull a partial xi, partial xl, x tilde l, partial xj, partial x tilde m, partial xk, partial x tilde n, right? Then that corresponds to these terms over here, right? If I pull those terms out over here, then we'll have a gamma i, so that's going to be a gamma, and the k is up top now, so I'll have a gamma k, and then comma ij, so the k is up top in that case. Excellent. And now I've cycled the other permutations over here, so what are we gonna get? We're gonna get a plus, plus h1, these other terms over here is gonna have a gij in it, gij. Then I claim it's gonna be a partial xi, partial x tilde m, partial x squared j, partial x tilde l, partial x tilde n. So let's make sense of that over here. So let's check and see what we're gonna get. So, what are we gonna have? So let's look at three, so three clear, so three over here has this gij, so let's look at this term over here, so this is the x tilde i, uh, let's look at in two, we have an x tilde i m, that's one term we have over there, right? And then in, which corresponds to gij, gij k, perfect. And then we have in one, we're going to have a what? Uh, we're also gonna have this term over here which corresponds to a xi m, one more over here, where will it be? xi squared. I mean, of course I can change the dummy index to m and n, right? So the, by the, the whole thing is that I wanna figure out where the second derivative attains its l, right? So the key thing to observe is that what do we have over here? We have a term like this that involves metric tensors, we have a term like this that involves metric tensors, and then two terms like this that involve metric tensors. So in other words, I have six things added up divided by half. So let's see what's gonna happen over here. Remember that in these indices, we can freely change i and j, right? So note over here, i and j are dummy. i and j are dummy indices, are dummy like that, okay? All right, good. And since they're dummy indices, we can take this i and replace the i and the j, and it won't change anything at all, right? So in other words, let's look at some of these terms over here. So if we were to replace i and j over here, what would happen? If we replace i and j over here, we'd have an xin, xin, and then an xi, xj squared ml, right? 
And so I have an XIN over here and then an XJLM, right? So in other words, those terms can be added to these terms are these terms are can be considered the same over here because they have the same indices. Likewise over here, so the XIN and then the X and the, both of these terms are here give me an XIN, partial squared XJ, XL, and then an M by switching the indices like that. And then over here, or it's this term over here and this term over here. So in other words, what else can we get? Well, I want to keep the L's with the X with the second derivatives. So these term and then the L's over here. So this is a lot of mumbo jumbo I'm trying to say right now, but let's just sort of take it nice and slow, right? So remember, I can change I and J over here. I can change I and J over here. And the whole point now is that what we'll get is we'll have an X, I, X, L over here. We'll have an X, I, where are the L's? X, I, X, L. And then there's an X, J, X, L. And then between those terms over there, I have one term with the L so that those terms can be symmetrized and I can push them all together, right? So those terms will cancel out. And then likewise, with two of the other terms, I can cancel two of the other terms out. And so it says the terms that have the XLs on the first derivative term have to vanish. So these terms over here that, have, that correspond to the XL on the first derivative must vanish. So I must have the M tilde and the N tilde on those variables over here. So this is the transformation law for the Christoffel symbols. So in other words, this is exactly partial XI, partial XL tilde partial xj, partial xm tilde, partial xk, partial x tilde n, gamma k, and then a j, then an i, plus, plus what? Plus gij, partial xi, partial x tilde m, partial squared xj, partial x tilde l, partial x tilde n, like that. Excellent. And so now, of course, let's what's the transformation law for the upper tensors? I'd like to raise this n, and I'd like to raise that k, right? So let's do it. So the next thing to observe is that recall that g bar n p is going to be g capital R s, and then d bar x n d bar d x. There's no bar there. D x tilde, tilde, tilde coordinates uh, P relative to DXR, relative to DXS, right? That's the transformation law. So if I hit both sides with this GNP tilde, what would that tell me? Well, then this thing over here, if I do this and hit it with GNT tilde, that will give me a gamma of what? Gamma LM, gamma LM, and then the N turns into a P. So I'm going to raise that L, that N over there to a P, like so. And those are in the tilde coordinates. Excellent. Will be what? Is going to be GRS. So now I'm going to do a GRS over here, but let's look over here what these terms are going to give me. I'm going to have a gamma KIJ DXI D tilde XL DXJ DX tilde M DXK DX tilde N dx tilde n, dx tilde n, dx, and then I have a what? Then an r, like that. And then a dx tilde p, dx tilde p, dx tilde, uh, just dx s. That's a, no the tilde's there. This is a kind of covariant thing. dx tilde s, dx s, like that. Plus what? Plus gij, gij, and we hit that with a grs, a dxi, dx tilde m, then a d squared xj, dx tilde l, dx tilde n, then I have a dx tilde, then I have a dx tilde n, dx tilde dxr, then a dx tilde p, a dx tilde s. Now there's lots to unpack over here, so let's do it slowly. So if we do this carefully, what are we going to see over here? We'll look at these terms over here. These terms over here both have a dx tilde n in the denominator and the numerator, so these turn into a what? These turn into a delta r k. So in other words, I have a delta r k, so that k over here is going to turn into a what? That k is going to turn into an r, right? And I have to hit this with what? I forgot to hit this thing over here with a grs. So this also is hit with a grs. So there's a grs over here. And what do we know about um, this is going to be a delta r k, delta r k over here. And so what's going to happen is that these r's are going to turn into k's. So this is really over here a g 
KS, and so that's going to raise this K and turn that into an S, okay? So that's going to be a gamma of S i j with upper partial x i partial x tilde l partial x j partial x tilde m and then partial x tilde p partial x s beautiful okay let's look over here and see what these terms are going to give me over here so i have an x n r and so what's going to happen over here is we're going to get another delta function over here. So the delta function we're going to get is going to be what? The delta, uh, oh, so over here, what do you know about R and, um, I want to conclude something about R and S over here. So I have a P and an S and an X tilde N and an X tilde P. So over here, I'm going to change the N and the P, right? And so it'll give me a delta I, it'll give me a delta, I can change the X by uh, switching the indices over here, I can change that this index into a J, right? By the symmetry over here, I can change the index into a J, and then turn that into an, uh, then what will we have? Then that will tell me that I is equal to R, right? And this will be a delta, then if I is equal to R by this, so in other words, looking at this over here, and then this over here, changing I into, uh, changing I into J by summation, and then by changing that will be a delta, well, we can, let's just change i into j, right? So if we turn i into j, I'll do this, and then this over here, like that. Excellent, because I'm just, and that, I'm using the symmetry of that, that won't affect that thing at all, because I can change i into j by the symmetry. And so now that will turn a, that will turn into a what? Now this, um, where did I put the n? Over there. And then I'll have a delta what? I'll have a delta, um, delta i r, so this is a delta j s. Delta J, this will turn into a delta JS. Like so. Because I is equal to R now, because of the N over here. Good. And so now will this turn into? So now, of course, those G's go away, and now you just have a, um, you're going to sum over this, uh, sum over this index over here. So the index over there is the index of summation. So I need something more careful over here. So let's be a little more careful with this. So then that turns the, the J's into S's. So the, the S now is also a what? The S is also a J. Excellent. So now those terms will cancel out, and so these will become what? These will become just partial squared D by DXP. X tilde P. D by DXJ. And then D squared DXJ, right? Now change it back to J. Over what? Over XL, X tilde L. And then X tilde M x tilde m. And so what that shows us, this is a transformation law for the Christoffel symbols over here. And now what's the important fact about this? The important fact is that now these things are no longer, since these terms over here exist, those terms show that the Christoffel symbols are not tensors. So gamma of ijs, ijs is not tensorial, is not tensorial. Nonetheless, we're going to use this identity for the transformation of the Christoffel symbols to find out how we'll differentiate covariant vectors with respect to the coordinate frame. Thank you very much.